Hiya Hinsters, welcome back to the channel and if you're new, welcome too. Please do subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you like what I do. I hope you are well, safe and well on this Tuesday due date. This is when I'm filming but I'm gonna release this one on Wednesday, hump day, tomorrow for you and yes this is on the Titanic tourist submersible and Saturn. Um, first of all, I just want to say that this kind of topic, this video topic, is more like what is often called mundane astrology, or like a kind of astrology which looks at world events, or catastrophes, tragedies, or political stuff, and it uh, tries to make predictions or explanations or reflect on these events and it is kind of a strand of astrology that I usually stay a little away from because engaging too much for me with these things, these topics is quite like anxiety inducing and um, I think for a lot of people it can contribute to uh, more stress or depression or anxiety in the long haul, the long term, if we are always occupying ourselves with such things as this particular video's topic. The One of the main reasons I wanted though to make this video is because it occurred to me personally on um, last Sunday when the news was really starting to come out about this story. That's, it, it just occurred to me to make this video and also because we have Saturn retrograde and I've been making a few videos on Saturn and reflecting on Saturn. Saturn is in Pisces right now and a lot of people will be going through their first or their second, maybe even their third Saturn return. And so that of course is relevant. I made a video on the Saturn return and also Saturn recently went retrograde this month of June. So that too I made a video on if you're interested and I made a video on Saturn in the birth chart or the natal chart. So you might be interested to go more in depth on Saturn, Saturn the God, if you haven't watched those videos already. But yeah, this Titanic tourist submersible, I'm gonna try and make this video quite quick. Um, and again, as I said yesterday in my last video, excuse my voice, um, I've been traveling and I feel a little like mm, stuffy, um, so apologies. But anyway, this Titanic tourist submersible, for those who don't know, it was like a capsule that people could go down uh, to the very bottom of the sea near the wreck site of Titanic the ship that famously sank and it was yet yeah, a touristic thing so this entrepreneur this very rich individual set this up i believe and um there have already been previous sort of descents using this capsule and one of the things i remember is that it was i think locked from or you couldn't get out from the inside of this capsule. It could not be opened from the inside once um, sealed or closed and had to be opened from the outside. But there was no kind of physical tether to this capsule. It was all controlled by what looked to be a knockoff Xbox console when I saw the pictures. It looked to be quite like flimsy and for me quite like frightening just to look at like to just to look at the controls and the equipment it can there was something very flimsy and like and also strange because there's so much money surrounding the foundation of this project this touristic project yet it looked kind of flimsy 
maybe a bit too simplistic considering the extreme dangers of descending to the wreck of the Titanic or just descending to the bottom of the ocean um, where there's just immense pressure and immense darkness and we still don't really know that much about the bottom of the sea. We just don't and we still don't have the resources to uh, be able to just, you know, <laughs> willy-nilly hop on down there and, and rescue someone. Um, and I think the further down you go, the, the less the survival potential, really, and um, the less your odds for surviving. Um, because there's so much pressure and so much darkness. But yeah, lots of things to consider there. And this wreck, this or this um, capsule, this wreck explorer capsule was last known to have dived below the surface on around Sunday, June 25th, 2023. And Saturn was already retrograde by this time. Interestingly, though, when Saturn was stationing to retrograde, that was around June 17th, 2023. And on June 16th was when the capsule or this this group of five people, five men, and one of them only 19 years old, when they departed from Newfoundland, St. John's. That was the date, June 16th. So I'm not sure of the specific time, but that is very close to when Saturn actually stationed to go retrograde. So when Saturn, the god, is like the planet, is like turning to go retrograde. And a lot of astrologers believe it's the stationing point of retrogrades, going retrograde and going direct when a retrograde is finishing. It's those two points that are most important or impactful or the most dramatic points of the retrograde and then we have yes on june 18th they arrive at the wreck site or like above the wreck site i guess and um june 19th i think this is when they are last seen or recorded um or they were close and just east of the wreck site. So these dates are all kind of very close to the stationing of Saturn to go retrograde. And very briefly, one thing that a lot of us uh, don't know is that Saturn is the god of watery deaths. And that's why this whole story really resonated with me when it came out, when I saw it, because I was just like, watery deaths there we go so i wasn't on the sunday so optimistic i'm quite an optimistic person hopeful person but i wasn't very optimistic about the lives of these men because saturn rules watery deaths and it was just so um easy to to make that assumption or to have that feeling and also Saturn is a malefic planet. So Saturn and Mars are the two malefics. And so they do tend to lean more to the challenging side of things or the, as the name suggests, malefic side of things. Retrogrades as well, it is often said in astrology, are not the best times to set ourselves on big investments. You know, in, in Mercury retrograde, for example, if I had a pound for every time an astrologer said, don't sign a contract, I'd be a zillionaire. Um, there is a lot of that hysteria surrounding retrogrades of don't do this, don't do that during the retrograde. And I'm not a big fan of that, to be honest. However, or, or what I will say is that, yes, you can still sign the contract, you can still take the job, you can still get in that relationship or whatever during a retrograde or when a planet is stationing to retrograde. You can still do it, but I would say to have a lot of um, plan plans, other plans, plan B, plan C, plan D, or at least to be prepared for the complete opposite of what you expected to happen. Be prepared for uh, 
reversals. And that leads me on to my next point, because retrogrades really are about reversals. And one thing that struck me is that... So first of all, what I mean by reversals is like, this is why retrogrades are not necessarily bad. Retrogrades are just reversals of stuff. So let's say Mercury is your first house ruler, which means Mercury rules your body, your health, your very self, right? That means you're a Gemini or a Virgo rising. So let's say you've been going through lots of chronic health problems for months, and then suddenly Mercury turns retrograde. This actually would symbolize a reversal of that. So things actually getting better for your body or for your health or for your spirit, your aura, whatever the first house thing might be. So yes, it's not necessarily negative, a retrograde, it's simply a reversal. And what struck me is that as I was reading the news and the days going along this story, the founder actually, it is said, ignored a lot of the warnings when it came to the safety of the capsule itself and I guess just the, the, the danger of the whole thing and with Saturn going retrograde then it's like it was going well because they didn't have any major incident like this. It was going well but now it's not going to go well as Saturn turns retrograde stations to retrograde. There is a reversal of how it had been going. And Pisces then, I, you know, I don't think Pisces is super relevant in this, other than the fact that Pisces is a water sign. It is a double-bodied, mutable, feminine water sign. But the very relevant thing uh, is that Jupiter rules Pisces, which means because Saturn's in Pisces, Jupiter is the host of Saturn while Saturn is transiting and retrograding in the sign of Pisces and this host Jupiter around the time was making a sextile and a sextile is when things are they're not necessarily good or bad sextiles they're just when everything is set to happen sextiles are like loaded gun aspects they are like you want to bake a cake, you've got all the ingredients you need to bake that cake, you just need to put them together, whack them in the oven, and you're going to have the cake. It's easy, easy kind of energy. Everything is set and ready to occur. So Jupiter and Saturn were making this sextile. Jupiter, of course, is in Taurus. I made a video on that. If you're interested, Jupiter's going to be in Taurus for roughly a year. Check out that video if you're interested. Um. So they were making this sextile, these gods, Jupiter and Saturn. And Jupiter being in Taurus, a fixed Earth sign, and Jupiter being conjunct the North Node at the time. The North Node was retrograding. I just got this message of like, don't go chasing waterfalls, essentially. Um, especially with that North Node retrograde, like because the North Node is about chasing things that are futile. It's about things like greed, hunger for power or hunger for more. It's like more and more and more. And when we have Jupiter, the grand expander, God conjunct the North Node, which is about more and more and more, you can see that this could be a lot about some very hard lesson pertaining to that pursuit of more and it not going well, or it needing to be something that is deeply reflected on or deeply reversed, because North Node itself was retrograde. The North Node and the South Node, they do retrograde a lot, but that is something quite interesting anyway. And, you know, Taurus is this sign of, like, common sense and also stubbornness, and... Jupiter is the god of the law being laid and of like big lessons and legalities. And so, yeah, there's definitely this humbling and sobering 
message to be taken from this whole event and story of like ignoring warnings and having to pay the price and and personally i think you know when people pursue things it's fine as a spirit as a person to pursue what you want to pursue do you right um but when other people's lives are like incorporated into our pursuit of something it becomes all the more selfish and dangerous and i just yeah think that this tragedy is really highlighting a huge lesson that we need to learn about not heeding warnings yeah so that's kind of like my little take on this um titanic uh, submersible story let me know in the comments your thoughts and reflections if you have any and yeah have a nice week and i'll see you in the next one take care bye, -bye.